<laughs> Earlier this week, I won the Nobel Peace Prize. It's true, and it was actually pretty easy, and uh, it felt really good. So I don't want to keep it a secret. I don't want to bottle that up. In fact, I'd like to share it with everyone here tonight so that you guys have a chance to win the Nobel Peace Prize. And this one, why don't we award it tomorrow, say, I don't know, whatever time you're having coffee in the morning. <laughs> Sound about right? The Nobel Peace Prize that you're thinking of, you might not have time to get ready for. Um, don't worry, it's not that complicated. You don't have to be this most altruistic person in the world who has never done anything wrong. You're thinking of the Nobel Peace Prize that's awarded to someone who's done incredible things to create great fraternity between nations and the reduction of arms. and peace, prosperity. Well, let's take someone who's done none of that. Let's take someone like a war profiteer, maybe the most famous in history. Let's take Alfred Nobel. Alfred Nobel's early years are famous because he was quite a smart kid. He liked to tinker in chemistry. He was good with poetry. He spoke five languages by the time he was 17 years old. He went into the family business, which AKA was blowing stuff up. <laughs> And he was good at it. He enjoyed it. His father was selling naval mines to Russia to fend off the Royal Navy during the Crimean War. Alfred would do one better, though. He would tinker with nitroglycerin, mix it with diatomaceous earth, and he created something called Nobel's Blasting Powder, which we know today as dynamite. And dynamite was a big hit with the rest of the world. Uh, it went on to a great success. He was a busy man. He traveled the world many times over. Uh, he established factories in 20 countries. By the time of his death, he had 350 patents on his name. But all of that great success came with certain costs. It did not escape the powers of the military might at the time. The dynamite was a destructive force, and it was indeed used to kill and to take many lives, including Alfred's own brother. Which, one morning in 1888, Alfred was reading the paper, having a cup of coffee, much like you guys will be tomorrow, when he read an interesting article, which was his own obituary. Now, the editor of the paper had made a mistake and confused Alfred's brother with Alfred Nobel. And he wrote some pretty scathing remarks. The merchant of death is dead. The man who was credited for killing more people faster than ever before has finally died. Wow. Now, that had to be a sobering moment. In fact, it was. It was that moment that Alfred Nobel realized that his legacy may not be the one that he wanted to leave behind. Well... Why not change it? Why not do something at that moment to change your life, to rewrite your own epitaph? And in that instant, Alfred Nobel created the Nobel Peace Prize. And that is the one that you and I and every person, man, woman, child on earth has the capability to win at any point in their life. On November 27th of 1895, Alfred put into motion the works that he created that morning over a cup of coffee by signing off his entire estate, millions and millions of dollars, to an organization known as the Nobel Peace Prize Organization, which we know today. And that has become his lasting legacy. But I ask you, was it his greatest gift? Was it an award that is handed out yearly that we should look to personally as a symbol for what we can do? Or is it the power to change? The power in one moment, over one cup of coffee, to say, I'm capable of doing better, of finding something in myself that I can improve, and then, in that moment, committing to doing so. That's the true gift that Alfred left behind. So I ask you, what will be your legacy? How will you be remembered? And how would you like to be remembered? If you'd like to change it, then all you have to do is follow the footsteps, because they will follow the same footprint every time. There will always be one instant, It'll be one moment, and it'll occur not across thousands of miles and take years of effort like the past Nobel laureates have done, but it'll only take a few seconds and six inches of space right up here between your ears. That's how it's going to occur. And that's how you will win the Nobel Peace Prize. Now, if you're thinking, I can't do what Alfred did, I, don't worry. You don't have to sign off your estate to a charity. You could simply start small. You could simply say, I'd like to be nicer to my dog. 
I'd like to spend more time with my family. But whatever it is, try over tomorrow's cup of coffee to win the Nobel Peace Prize, and you'll find you're a better person for it.